Hey everybody, Ray here. Today we're going to make some floating shelves. Now this is a bit of a continuation of a project putting together sort of a media wall for my son. What we've done already is to put a floating cabinet down below where the television hangs. That project came out really good. If you want to see how I did that, I'll post that video right here. The next part of it is we're going to put two floating shelves next to the television. And that's what this is for. It's two 24-inch floating shelves that we're going to make today. If you want to see how I make it, stick around and I'll show you how. Hey, and don't forget, if you like this video, hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. As I said, these uh, shelves are going to be about 24 inches wide. So what I've done is I've cut two pieces here, roughly 25 inches wide, and then I cut the two pieces that will go on the sides, and these are not cut to any specific length, probably 10, 12 inches. And then what will happen is, after I've got these cut at 45s and put them together, there will be a 1 by 8 piece of poplar that fits in both the top and the bottom of this floating shelf. So the first thing we want to do is just get it close to where we wanted it, and now we're going to cut the 45 degree angles. Now my first cut is just to establish the 45 degree angle at one end of my board here. I'm not worried about length, I just want to establish that first 45 degree angle. So I'll do that for both boards. Now for the next step, what I've done is to set my stop block for 24 inches. So I know that when I cut both of these boards, they will be exactly 24 inches. This is a variation off of a stop block that I made for this miter saw. There's a video out there I call how to cut accurate angles for picture frames. This works great for picture frames. The other thing that it does is when you line that up, this gives your blade something. It's almost like having a 45 zero degree clearance because it just really protects that wood and you don't get splintering in the back. I forgot to mention earlier that the sides and the front of the floating shelves are 1 by 4, 1 by 4 poplar. So we've cut all of our 45 degree angles, so this is how the front and the sides will fit together. Now nestled in here on the bottom and on the top is going to be a 1 by 8 piece of poplar, and when I get that cut, you don't need to watch me cut anymore, do you? When I get that cut, I'll come back and show you how that fits in here. Kind of a cool trick that I'm trying here today is uh, you take your 45 degree angles and you put some tape underneath your angle and then you take your other piece that you want to fit into the 45 and you just drop it right on that same piece of tape and then make sure that that's joined on there really well. When you lift this, what it'll do is it'll just close up that angle really tightly for you so you can glue it and brad nail it. I thought that worked pretty cool. So we're going to put some glue on here, glue these up and brad nail them. So we've cut the bottom of our shelf here. And as you can see, it will just slide right into that. And now we'll come back, cut another piece like that, which will be the top. And then we can start putting this all together. But it looks like it's coming together really nicely. Okay, the sides are glued on to the bottom here or the top, whichever the case may be. Next thing what we want to do is we'll be putting on this top piece here and we want it flush with the edges when we put it on. This will be the piece that will connect it to the wall. So I will put screws in here and then this will be connected to the wall and then this piece here will slide over this like that. Okay? Now, what I did was I measured down how far I needed for this to be flush and then I ripped these pieces of one by poplar and then I connected them with pocket hole screws and glue such that when I want to put this piece in here now and glue it, it is flush with the top edge all the way around here. So the next step is that I will go ahead and glue this in and then for all practical purposes except for finishing this piece is ready to go. 
So now we're ready to glue our final piece into the top here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue along the inside edge of the floating shelf. The reason I'm doing that is if I run the bead of glue along the edge of this board here, which will be the top, this is going to fit very snugly into here. So as I slide this down, the glue would be forced up and over the edge on here and on the board, and I'd have to clean all that up. If I glue inside, then when I push that board down, any of the excess glue will bleed down inside the floating shelf here, and I don't really care about that. So I'm going to go ahead and run that bead of glue in here, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, now that we've run our bead of glue around the edge, I'm going to take my brace and I'm going to slip that down inside here, leaving it out enough that if I get it too snug, I can still get it out. You want it snug. Then I can take my shelf top here and start to fit that in. And you can see that it fits in there pretty, pretty snugly, which is exactly what you want. And then I can just move that down till I get flush with the edge of my board here sitting on top of this. See how snug that is in there? Now we're going to go ahead and uh, pin nail this, make sure that it's flush, and this piece will be ready to go. Okay, I got the piece glued in here. Now, I actually did not put any brad nails in here. It fits so snugly <clears throat> that all I did was clamp it. I clamped it this way and I clamped it this way because I want to try to minimize any gaps between this top board and the edge. It's sitting in there pretty flush, so when it dries, it's not going to take much sanding to get that really smoothed out. And then our brace, you can see, fits in there perfectly snugly, which is exactly what we want. So when we put this up on the wall, it's going to sit and not wobble at all. It's coming out pretty well. Okay, kind of a neat little finishing trick here is if you look along this portion, you can see that it looks like it fits just perfectly together. It really didn't. There was kind of a gap in there, just like there is right here. You can see that gap. And so what you can do is just take a little bit of wood glue. I just use a toothpick. And then just sort of fill that little gap in with the glue. Kind of get it down inside there a little bit with the point of the toothpick. Now once you get that filled in as far as you want to go, you can kind of smooth it off just a little bit with your toothpick. You want to leave enough in there that it's going to fill that gap. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your sander. Now what this is going to do is as it's sanding, it's going to create dust. The dust will be the same color as the wood that it's sanding, so it should match really well when you're done. So you can see where we filled that gap there. It looks just about perfect. Then we'll go back along here and we'll finish up this little gap. And then the top of this is going to look great. The second tip here may be a little more difficult to see. But there's kind of a crease in the wood right there and then a little dent in that spot right there. Hopefully you can see that. What we're going to do is we're going to lay a, a moist paper towel on the wood right there. Then we're going to take an iron and run it over that paper towel, causing it to dry and steam. And that should help raise that indentation in the wood. Let's take a look and see how we're doing. Yep, it's nearly gone. So we're going to make our cloth a little wet again. You don't want it soaking wet, you just want it damp. We'll come back to that same spot. It was, it was still a little bit right there. And we're going to go over this again. Let that steam and heat that wood underneath. Okay, 
I tell you what, that is that has virtually disappeared. Just to show you again, now that it's dried a little bit, you can just barely, barely see that crease in there. And I think once we sand that down, it should totally disappear. Now this next step is purely optional. But for me, I'm doing it because we put a chamfer edge, which is just a beveled edge, on the floating cabinet that I talked about at the beginning of the video. So we're going to do that on these edges just so it matches that cabinet. So I've set up my mini router table here and uh, I've got it hooked to a vacuum cleaner because these things are really messy um, and I'm going to just very quickly run it through the router here. To show you the difference, here's the chamfered or the beveled edge here, and then here's just the plain edge here. And I really think that that chamfer adds something to this because it follows along the grain. It just makes it pop a little bit more. It's a little bit fancier edge. The shelves were sanded with 220 grit sandpaper, and I applied three coats of polyurethane on each one. To mount these shelves, we've marked where we want the top of each of the two floating shelves to be and where we want to line up with our cabinet here on the right hand side and we've marked all that out. We're going to install these with wall anchors, some heavy duty wall anchors. So I've pre-drilled where I want to put those wall anchors in. When we get to that point, I'll show you how that works. The way these toggle bolts work is you drill a half inch hole in your wall and then you're going to slip this toggle through there. It is connected to a long plastic piece. That will allow the toggle to open up. There's a slider here that slips down and holds that toggle fast to the wall. It's really a great system. Then you just simply snap that off and then when your screw goes in, it'll get into the toggle, which is behind the wall. So it has a lot of strength to this toggle bolt. Now we've drilled holes through our supports here that will match up to where our toggle bolts are. So now all we have to do is push those screws through to where they'll catch on that toggle bolt. And we can then tighten them up to the wall. Now that we've got our support brace in here, the only thing we have to do is to take our floating shelf, fit it on there, it's nice and tight just like we wanted it, and slide it back in place like that. And there's our floating shelf. I'm going to do the second one here and then I'll bring you back and show you how it looks finished. <clears throat> Well, our floating shelves really completed our media wall here, and they came out really nicely. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.